Having a hard time translating what you see into just black ink? This topic has come up in my comments. In this video, I share my process, including a practice exercise that you can later apply as a technique for drawing what you see in pen and ink. I chose a nature scene as the subject. This process begins with the end in mind. What elements are we likely to come across in a nature scene? Probably trees and various botanical elements. So let's do a warm up using those elements. With a fine liner pen, and in my sketch pad, I start by drawing a tree trunk without reference from imagination. I draw a tree trunk. It starts as an outline for the shape. After shape comes volume. Volume makes the shape appear 3D and to make it more realistic, shading gives it form. With the light source coming from the upper right corner, I use hatch strokes along the length of the form to shade it, going from dark to light. I achieve this effect by laying the strokes close together in the darkest area of the trunk. Then spread the lines further apart until they become sparse in the area of lightest value. This line pattern serves to reinforce the illusion of volume. It's now a cylindrical shape with tree bark. Trees come in different shapes, bark in different textures, and we can apply textures by going along the length or across the form. That's the formula for our technique here. Shape, volume, form, stroke direction, and texture. Those are the key pen and ink fundamentals. And I often refer to this particular chart for guidance that you can find in this author's book. And I also made a Pinterest board of values chart that you'll find links in the description for. Let's keep practicing by applying our formula to other elements. Starting with a leafy tree outline. For volume, we'll give it overlapping clusters to indicate groups of leaves and now branches. Before shading it, we want to set up the direction of the strokes because this will provide information about the directions that the leaves grow from the stem, direction that the branches grow from the trunk. As well, let's remember that the overlapping clusters may cast shadow on the elements below. These principles gain even more importance when the subject are small or further away from the viewer in the picture plane. It's in the execution of these key principles that provide clues to the viewer in how to interpret what they're seeing in the artwork. The trick is to be able to communicate complete information with few marks. Exercising these techniques will help us achieve that. It helps if we establish how the subject would look from close up and really small, then in a cluster formation. Let's apply the formula to a complex shape. Now, still from your head, without reference, construct a spruce or fir tree. Imagine how the branches would overlap. Map out the angles as a guide for applying direction of the strokes and appropriate textures. We don't need to be a coniferous expert to construct what a branch might look like close up from imagination by just using basic 3D forms such as these little tubes and the direction of the needle leaves following the length of the form. Now sketching the whole tree, mindful again of the light and dark shading. I check that I followed the pattern that we've established with our initial shape outline, the form, stroke direction, the close up, and how the light source influences the range of values across the textures. What about some blades of grass? For the shape, let's establish that they grow in little bunches. The blades might not all stand vertically, Realistically, organic elements have random irregularities. Close-up grass will have more detail and marks will gradually become smaller and sparse to communicate atmospheric perspective. We can imply this by drawing the elements with softer edging the farthest they are from the viewer. Now that our exercise is complete, let's go to the park. Our objective is to translate what we see into black and white line art and render it using the principles we practice so that it transfers the way we intended for the viewer. Now that the key fundamentals of pen and ink are fresh on our brains, we're predisposed to look at nature with those principles as our lens of observation. Once I find a suitable subject, meaning one that meets the criteria of what we just practiced, I sketch loose boundaries for the main shapes, overall structure, relationship of the shapes, going from general to more specific. I pay attention to shape, already planning out where to add volume and confirming the stroke direction for each of the elements. 
While I'm on site, I look at those elements close up from far away and from different angles, plus take reference photos. Now back at the studio, I refine the drawing to match the textures that we practice and consult some of my values charts as guideline for the tones that we'll be using for shading. If you've watched my previous videos, you'll have practiced these charts already. Otherwise, links are in the description. For the ink application, I'll be using a Hunt 512 dip pen with Super Black India ink. It's a larger nib, which forces me to focus on our objectives with this drawing. If I were to use a smaller nib, I'd be tempted to get sidetracked into rendering details too soon, and by doing so, end up skipping over important principles or overworking the drawing. I start with the elements in the forefront, then work my way onto the parts that overlap. For example, these shrubs overlap the grassy blades and are also in front of this small tree. I glance over at our photo reference for guidance as there's now new information that we lacked while doing the exercise, such as perspective, proportions, as well the shading angles and intensity have changed because the elements now intermingle as part of a composition. For instance, it was the 9am sun, rising east not too high yet casting a fairly strong shadow on the spruce. I respond by concentrating the hatch marks on the shadow side of the tree also on the heavy branches of the spruce and the cluster of leaves on the large tree tucked behind it, though keeping with the textures that we already practiced. I'm adding tone under the spruce to indicate cast shadow. I think it's a spruce, maybe someone can confirm this if you know. I aim to keep the lines clean. I accomplish this by bringing the marks together until they nearly touch to create darks or merge into solid black, rather than scribbling or hatching on top of existing lines. My concern is that a line drawing can quickly get muddy if randomly crossing marks over each other. In general, I prefer to practice orderly lines, otherwise it's painful to resolve a project that's been overworked and frustrating to fix problem areas. A problem area is where the drawing doesn't read well or is confusing to the viewer. For the finishing touches, I judiciously add marks to build midtones in the areas that benefit from more gradual values and ensure that dark areas that contain important information are framed by lighter values. For example, this intersection where the spruce branches overlap the tree behind it is in the shade, and so I opted for a white outline in that section as the solution. I like this method of working backwards, meaning starting with the end in mind, because it gives us direction for the entire project. We know where to focus our efforts in the rendering of the drawing. We did majority of the problem solving at the exercise stage, and for the nature scene, we limited new problems by sticking to the formula. And also, by beginning the exercise from imagination, it encouraged us to practice observation skills in the sense that it can be challenging to recall an object and draw it from memory. Like a spruce is complex, although we might form an idea of what that looks like by going into nature to verify our assumptions and to collect visual information, then we're later better equipped to execute the final drawing. With consistent practice, we can, by using this method, get into the habit of looking at the world with a pen and ink lens to build up our memory bank. Best of luck with your pen and ink projects, and I'll see you in the next one.